What's up, everybody? Welcome to Blue Nar Power. This is Gabby. And KT. We're back with another episode. KT is back. Hello. Uh, we are going to continue our reading of Blood in the Eye. We are on the fascism part. We are on page 127 starting out. Um, and uh, we're going to get right into it. Remember, hit us up at Blue Nar PWR. Any questions, concerns, donations, anything? Uh, let's get right to it. All right. So, page 127, fascism. Its most advanced form is here in America. Page 129. Comrade John, I've just finished rereading Angela's analysis of fascism. She's a brilliant, big, beautiful, revolutionary woman, ain't she? I've studied your letters on the subject carefully. It could be productive for the three of us to get together at once and subject the whole question to a detailed historical analysis. There is some difference of opinion and interpretation of history between us, but basically I think we are brought together on the principal points by the fact that the three of us could not meet without probably causing World War III. Give her any deepest and warmest love and ask her to review these comments. This is not all that I will have to say on the subject. I'll constantly return to myself and re-examine. I expect I will have to carry this on for another couple of hundred pages. We'll deal with the questions as they come up, but for now, this could provoke both of you to push me to a greater effort. The basis of Angela's analysis is tied into several old left notions that are at least open to some questions now. It is my view that out of the economic crisis of the last greatest depression, fascism, corporativism, did indeed emerge, develop, and consolidate itself into its most advanced form here in America. In the process, socialist consciousness suffered some very severe setbacks. Unlike Angela, I do not believe that this realization leads to a defeatist view of history. An understanding of the reality of our situation is essential to the success of future revolutionizing activity. To contend that corporativism has emerged and advanced is not to say that it has triumphed. We are not defeated. Pure fascism, absolute totalitarianism is not possible. Hierarchy has had 6,000 years of trial. It will never succeed for long in any form. Fascism and its historical significance is the point of my whole philo philosophy on politics and its extension, war. My opinion is that we are at the historical climax, the flashpoint, of the totalitarian period. The analysis and depth that the subject deserves has yet to be done. Important as they are, both Wilhelm Reich and Franz Newman's works on the subject are limited. Reich tends to be over-analytical to the point of idealism, I don't think Newman truly sensed the importance of the anti-socialist movement. Baymouth is too narrowly based on the experiment, experience of German National Socialism, so there is so much to be done on the subject and time is running out. If I am correct, we will soon be forced into the same fight that the old left avoided. 62071 It is not defeatist to acknowledge that we have lost a battle. How else can we regroup and even think of carrying on the fight? At the center of the revolution is realism. To call one or two or a dozen setbacks defeat is to overlook the ebbing and flowing process of revolution, coming closer to our calculations and then receding, but never standing still. If a thing isn't building, it must be decaying. As one force emerges, the opposite force must yield. As one advances, the other must retreat. There is a very significant difference between retreat and defeat. I am not saying that our parents were defeated when I contend that fascist corporativism emerged and advanced in the U.S. At the same time it was making its advance, it caused by its very nature and advance in worldwide socialist consciousness. Quote, when U.S. capitalism reached the stage of imperialism, the West 
Eastern great powers had already divided among themselves almost all the important markets in the world. At the end of the World War II, when the other imperialist powers had been weakened, the U.S. became the most powerful and richest imperialist power. Meanwhile, the world situation was no longer the same. The balance of forces between imperialism and the socialist camps had fundamentally changed. Imperialism no longer ruled over the world, nor did it play a decisive role in the development of the world situation, quote. In my analysis, I'm simply taking into account the fact that the forces of reaction and counter-revolution were allowed to localize themselves and radiate their energy here in the U.S. The process has created the economic, political, and cultural vortex of capitalism's last reform. My views corresponded with those of all the third world revolutionaries, and if taken in the international sense, they are aggressive and realistic. The second notion that stands in the way of our understanding of fascist corporativism is a se semantic problem. When I'm being interviewed by a member of the old guard and point to the concrete and steel, the tiny electronic listening device concealed in the vent, the phallics of goons peeping in at us, his barely functional plastic tape recorder that cost him a week's labor, and, the point, and point out that these are all manifestations of fascism, he will invariably attempt to attempt to refute me by defining fascism simply as an economic geopolitical affair where only one political party is allowed to exist above ground and no opposition political activity is allowed. But examine that definition of totalitarianism, comrade. No opposition parties are allowed in China, Cuba, North Korea, or North Vietnam. Such a narrow definition condemns the model revolutionary societies to totalitarianism. Despite the presence of political parties, there is only one legal politics in the U.S., the politics of corporativism. The hierarchy commands all state power. There are thousands of ways, however, to attack it and place that power in the hands of the people. Okay. So, uh... Just a quick thing. Some of you was talking about was that, you know, when he was defining fascism, he's like, yeah, some people may think that I'm being a little too extreme. Mm -hmm. And they might think that by me saying that the corporatism has taken over, that I'm saying that the people in the past ain't done nothing. But that's not what he was trying to say. He was just saying that the United States has evolved into this, and this is our bread and butter. This is what's helped us to exceed, succeed this fascism and... Um, yeah, and then we're talking about how, you know, again, we, I think we talked about this last week, just people, they don't want to call a thing a thing. And you'll even see that online. You start saying America's fascist, America's white supremacist, y'all just throw that out willy-nilly. It loses its meaning the way you throw it out. Well, damn, I wouldn't have to call it fascism if it wasn't fascism. And people are caught up in, well... America allows you to have free speech. America allows you to do this. America allows you to do that. America allows you to do whatever as long as they don't think you are a threat. As soon as they start mm -hmm. thinking that it ain't just lip service and you actually start doing something, that's when you get crushed. Yeah. And also the illusion of choice. Just because there's a Democratic Party, just because there's a... Uh, not the Democratic Party, a Green Party, just because there's a Capitalist Party, just because there's a Libertarian Party, does not mean that you have a choice. That's all games, all illusion. We live in a fascist country. It's all right to say that. And uh, it's, it's just interesting to see, like, I guess he's going to go more into, like, how he would define corporativism. But we know it's gotten a quadrillion times worse than the 70s because the 70s, when they first started doing all that reform stuff after all that... Uh, political unrest and so then the 80s came yeah and reagan so it's gotten even worse yeah mm -hmm. all right so 6 20 71 all levels of struggle must be conceived as inclined planes leading inexorably to a point 
where armed conflict will engulf two or more sections of the people. Armed struggle or organized violence is the natural outcome of a sequence of historical events that have matured to the point of impasse. This is not to say that war is for us the only immediate recourse or the spontaneous result of a breakdown in lesser forms of political activity. I have always tried to emphasize that through every change of political mobilization, there must be a corresponding and equal military mobilization of the people's forces. One is inextricably tied into the other, and not simply for the reason unwittingly put forward by the old guard that fascism allows for no valid opposition political activity, though there is some truth in that position. My position is based on historical precedents that indicate the probable scope and range of violence in American Revolution. In the present class structure, we, we represent the group with the greatest revolutionary potential. We are black, the significance of which needs very little analysis here, though I will go into the mechanics of race at length later in dealing with the contextual structure of fascist hierarchy. But mainly, my position is rooted in the long history of the American business oligarchies penchant for violent repression of any forces that have threatened its centralist movement and in the very natural defense reflexes of any form of state power. Although as victims of one of history's most bu brutal contradictions, as the poorest of the poor, as blacks, it is quite justifiable and completely possible for us to destroy this country as a modern nation state to attack it with a total destructive countersweep of frustrated, retaliatory rage. That is not our purpose. As revolutionaries, it is our objective to move ourselves and the people into action that will culminate in the seas of state power. Our real purpose is to redeem not merely ourselves, but the whole nation and the whole community of nations from colonial community economic repression. The U.S. has established itself as a moral in, mortal enemy of all people's government. All scientific socialist mobilization of consciousness everywhere on the globe. All anti-imperialist activity on earth. The history of this country in the last 50 years and more, the very nature of all its fundamental elements and its economic social, political, and military mobilization distinguish it as the prototype of the international fascist counter-revolution. The U.S. is the Korean problem, the Vietnamese problem, the problem in the Congo, Angolia, Mozambique, and the Middle East. It's the Greece in the British and Latin American guns that operate against the masses of common people. 62171. The nature of fascism, its characteristics and properties, have been in dispute ever since it was first identified as a distinct phenomenon growing out of Italy's state supported and developed industries in 1922. Whole libraries have been written around the subject. There have been a hundred party lines on just exactly what fascism is. But both Marx, Marxists and non-Marxists agree on at least two of its general factors. Its capitalist orientation and its anti-labor, anti-class nature. These two factors almost by themselves identify the U.S. as a fascist corporative state. An exact definition of fascism concerns me because it will help us identify our enemy and isolate the targets of revolution. Further, it should help us to understand the workings of the enemy's methodology. Settling this question of whether or not a mature fascism has developed will finally clear away some of the fog in our liberation efforts. This will help us to broaden the effort. We will not succeed until we fully accept the fact that the enemy is aware, determined, disguised, 
totalitarian, and mercilessly counter-revolutionary. To fight effectively, we must be aware of the fact that the enemy has consolidated through reformist mechanization and the greatest community of self-interest that has ever existed. Our insistence on military action, defensive and retaliatory, has nothing to do with romanticism or precipitous, idealistic fever. We want to be effective. We want to live. Our history teaches us that the successful liberation struggles require an armed people, a whole people, actively participating in the struggle for their liberty. The final definition of fascism is still open simply because it is still a developing movement. We have already discussed the defects of trying to analyze a movement outside of its process and its sequential relationships. You gain only a discolored glimpse of a dead past. No one will fully comprehend the historical implications and strategy of fascist corporativism except the true fascist manipulator or the researcher who is able to slash through the smoke screens and distinguishes, or I'm sorry, disguises the fascist set up. Fascism was the product of class struggle. It is an obvious extension of capitalism, a higher form of the old struggle, capitalism versus socialism. I think our failure to clearly isolate and define it may have something to do with our insistence on a full definition. In other words, looking for exactly identical symptoms from a nation to nation. We have been consistently misled by fascism's nationalistic trappings. We have failed to understand its basically international character. In fact, it has followed international socialism all around the globe. One of the most definite characteristics of fascism is its international quality. All right, yeah, so pretty much uh, as he was talking about, he was saying, you know, it's good to get a good definition of uh, what fascism is so that you know what your enemy is doing, how they're doing it, yada, 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 and how it changes from place to place. Um, you know, we're seeing fascism in real time. If I was to say what is fascism uh, or what I would define as fascism, I would, I would say any, any structure that is built on a hierarchy and whose ultimate goal is to maintain the status quo. Uh, and in today's time, 2023, the status quo is white supremacy, is uh, capitalism, is homophobia, is uh, ableism, and all that other stuff. All these things are built on inequalities and hierarchies, and they need these things to survive. So anything that's reinforcing these hierarchies are fascist uh, in nature. So that's why it's, you know, fascism can easily seep into marginalized groups, and they don't even know that it's being seeped into them because mm -hmm. it can you can utilize it. Like, the, the America's gotten really, really in the West, or just fascism in general, and all these evil people, they've gotten real, real smart in how they can maneuver now. They can make people who they are actively stepping on, step on others, and then encourage others. It's, it's just ridiculous. Like, people were talking about, you know, there's a pipeline. They were talking about the Manosphere pipeline and Andrew Tate pipeline to the fascism and all that other stuff, the alt-right and all that other stuff. And then people were talking about how, if you don't know, there is a fascist pipeline that is attacking and starting to target black women by utilizing turf ideology, yeah. by honing into their insecurities of being masculinized, of being dehumanized, and somehow making it trans people's problem and trans people's fault, mm. and therefore getting them to join on the turf, the turf brigade, and reinforcing those hierarchies that is uh, cis sexism, that transphobia, all that other shit. So 
everybody can play a part. That's what's so beautiful about the fascism and all this other shit, white supremacy, capitalism. Everybody can play a part. They can be the most oppressed people, but everybody can play a part in helping keeping this little boat afloat. Everybody has a role. Yep. Everybody can be a part of oppression of somebody else, and we encourage that type of stuff. And so now, of course, economy is doing horrible. Inflation, bad. We've already talked about this. So we need people to blame. Who can we do? Yes, you too can be a fascist. You too can be a capitalist. Let's target the trans people. Let's target these other people. That is, that's, that's just what fascism does. It uses any and everything to uphold the status quo. All that little kumbaya stuff that was going on for two seconds, <laughs> over with. Nobody wants to read a book. Nobody wants to have a conversation. Nobody cares anymore. I am struggling. Therefore, I am more susceptible to fascist talk, talking points, fascist people. And the algorithm on the Internet will show me these things yeah. and, 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 and bombard me with it until eventually it becomes normal, if it wasn't already. So, yeah, I... um. I mean, we're we're literally seeing it in real time. It ain't hidden like with Obama and stuff like that. Everybody's playing a part. Everybody has to because things are just too bad. They're too bad. They have to pull out all the punches. And this is another thing. This isn't really related to it, but it kind of is. We were talking about the inflation and all this other stuff with the economy. Okay. I was watching some on, about Jon Stewart. He got that little new little TV show. Uh, sponsored by Apple. Mm -hmm. He was talking to some capitalist guy, and they were talking about inflation and how, you know, it just... I'm, I'm tired, guys. <laughs> I am tired because you know these are the people that everybody's going to see and be like, John Stewart, yes, sticking it to the man. That's what I'm talking about. I mean, about. that's what they did in the And comments. their whole entire premise is just, I'm going to own the, the Republicans. <laughs> Not finna do nothing myself. Not finna take no money out of my pocket. Not finna go and lobby. Mm -mm. Not finna go talk to my rich friends and see how we can redistribute our wealth. No, I'm just gonna get on TV. And I'm gonna talk to a Republican about how, you know, we need health care. And, you know, inflation, they can do something about inflation and corporate greed. But I'm not really ever gonna change nothing. It's always a, uh, what I like to call it is like a, Ha ha, gotcha. But like you said, like a ha ha, gotcha, or like a gotcha man, or whatever, doesn't really like. At the end of the day, it doesn't make a material difference in people's lives. You can you can punch at the Republicans. Good job, great job. But what does that do? It's like pointing and laughing at a bully, but that doesn't change that bullying is happening. You know what I'm saying? You're still you're still a fascist. It's, you're still a fascist. Right? It, John Stewart is still a fascist. It, it, it don't matter. It, it doesn't matter. And definitely the fact that Apple allows it is, is a number one uh, factor in that. But it's just that, I don't know, guys. What do y'all think? What do y'all think the present state of people are? Because I see people all the time on TikTok uh, crying about how they're in terrible living situations. They're tired of working. They don't know how they're going to make ends meet. And it's just like... The voices, the radical voices, not even us, because forget us, but just people in general who might have had platforms at one point or might have had uh, been able to reach people at a certain point is like they're getting drowned out. And all I see now are these damn, these liberal people coming right back out the woodwork now. And now they want to say something, but they don't want to say too much because Joe Biden is president. Yeah. So they're going to lay low a little bit longer, but let a Republican come out. They finna be up in the front lines once again, spewing some bullshit. I don't even know what the point of that was, but I just wanted to bring that up because I had been seeing him on the TL a little too long now, and people like him. We don't need to bring that type of stuff back no more. John Oliver, get him off the television show as well because he all he do is get on there and tell you what the problem is, but he ain't actually trying to come up with real solutions that's going to help everybody. So... 
Yeah, all these things can be tools as well, y'all. All these things can be tools because if you think that all you have to do is, all I have to do is watch this show, all I have to do is vote this person in, all I have to do is do that, you're going to look down on anybody who's like, no, we finna shake shit up. Still an individual like, I don't, solution, right. too, you know? That's true. But, uh, yeah, guys, what do y'all think um, about the text? And what do y'all think about, um, you know, this current, quote-unquote, inflation thing that we know is fake? Um, and the present state of, of media at this time. Let us know. Hit us up at our on the social medias at Building Our PWR on our social media sites. This has been Gabby and Katie. And this has been Building Our Power.